Oh my god, hey! Welcome to the third episode of Street Street Movies Live. This is my friend Graham. Do you want to introduce yourself, Graham? Um, yeah, hi, my name is Graham Edwards, and I am a local comedian. Local to Atlanta. Yeah, here in Atlanta. Well, just anywhere. I'm not well known, but you find me in your city. I'm there. I think we met, I'm not sure, but I remember at the Vice shoot. I feel like that's when I met you. Really? That's crazy. Like can't. about two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Which wasn't my shoot. It was just. Oh yeah, I no. Was Graham's, out. Uh, Graham was the star of Vice's Flop House. Yeah, I was the star of Vice's Flop. I'm Lance Bangs. It's great to be here. Yeah, I think I met you there, and then I talked to you at our mutual friend's birthday party, and I was like, and then I, because I liked your status, I went to your ice cream party, and then we became friends. Yeah, I'm glad you went to the ice party. cream cake party. That was uh, that was a good time. I feel like you had you were definitely. The first one was like, yeah, anybody can go to this, and it's fine. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah. We're going to watch The Master. And, uh... <laughs> what is happening behind us? I don't know what Travis did. Yeah, I don't know what that is a reference to. It's a the what video game? Oh! Oh, man, I want to play that now. That looks like it's from, like, 2002 when that movie came out, like, last year or the year before. That's really unfortunate. Are you a big horror fan, Graham? I don't know if we've ever actually talked about that specifically. Um, you know, I like horror movies, but no, I'm not a big horror fan. Uh, but I'm glad to be here talking about them. You guys can get the common man's perspective from me, because you love horror films. Like, yeah, I have since I was a little kid. So you're biased, I think. Um, but biased if, in favor of horror films? Yeah, in favor of them. Um, but if people want the, you know, working man's perspective, mm -hmm. um, I'm a middle of the road horror fan. What would you say your favorite genre is then, if you have one? Because I know you like movies a lot. I do like movies a lot. I don't know if I have a favorite genre. Just P.T. Um, Anderson films? I do like P.T. Anderson films. Um, I, yeah, he's great. I guess, I don't know, I'm trying to get into Dog Me 95. Lately, that's definitely not my favorite the genre. Dogma films. Yeah. That's, I've seen a couple but, of Lars von Trier uh, films, but I haven't seen any yet, like Dogma. I haven't seen any Lars von Trier. I watched a Dogma film, um, I think it's In Your Hands, over the weekend. It was pretty good. Um, don't watch The Idiots. This is supposed to be I really want to see The Idiots. I don't want to ever see Well, it just seems like offensive and weird. And yeah. Like weird for the sake of weird. I don't know. Has, I don't know. I don't know, so I want to see like a Dog Me 95 comedy, because I feel like, um, well, you know, comedy I feel like would be an easy genre to work in mm -hmm. that film. For like a, you know, filmmaking set of rules that's like meant to like lead out of Hollywood and stuff like that. It seems like something like fantastical or extreme has to happen in them. Mm -hmm. That's how I would describe uh, Melancholy and, <laughs> and Antichrist, the two... Um Large bunch of films yeah. that I have seen. They're pretty... Have you seen the clip from Antichrist with the fox? This counts as horror because it's really scary. Um, or the fox is eating itself. No, I haven't. It's I got... I won't go into unless you want me to talk. I don't want to, like, spoil it. No, that's okay. It's like uh, Willem Dafoe is walking through the woods and he sees this fox and he, like, looks at it. Or it's like a clearing and the fox is eating its own stomach. And he looks at it and the fox turns to him and it goes... Chaos. Chaos reigns, and then it cuts. <laughs> it's the best thing I've ever seen. Does it say rains like rain, that, like chaos, the chocolate rain, rain kid? No, it's just like chaos rains, and then like the CGI fox mouth as it's like eating itself, and it's the best. I love Antichrist. Oh also, man, yeah, I, I started watching it the other day, but I had like friends over, so like none of us were paying attention. That's not a good movie to do no, that with. No, it's not a good movie to do that with. Also, that's just not a good thing to do in general. Just like, make be like watch it. well, just like be hanging out with people and just like, I'm just gonna put a movie on in the background mm -hmm. and we'll all look at it for a second and be like, why are we watching this? And then and go then back to talking. Else. Yeah. Okay, I have, to, I, we have uh, some remote. Okay. Well, actually, this is just a, a segment of my friend Bill talking about his favorite horror movie and it's a really good recommendation. Travis, if you can, can we look, can we load up Mr. B Mr. Bill? When, when people say, what's your favorite horror movie, it's, that's, a, that's a tough one. But if I just had to pick one, it would probably be Eyes Without a Face. But it's so poetic and so beautiful. I saw an image years ago in, in some book on horror. Back <clears throat> before the internet, you would, you would hear about these movies and see the images and the magazines and the books and, and have very little chance of 
ever getting to see them unless you were lucky enough to live in a college town or had a theater that would show things like this. And it was just this haunting image of this woman wearing a wax mask. Only her eyes were the only part of her that you could see. Uh, and for 1960, it was unbelievably graphic. What they were able to show, audiences were, were horrified by this. And, and it, it is truly astonishing and clinical. But film just so the gorgeous black and white photography, haunting soundtrack. The people who worked on this went on to, to become Academy Award winning cinematographers and musicians. It has a, a, an incredible pedigree. Um, just such a, such a combination of beauty and horror that's seldom ever been done better. Okay. All right. Welcome back. Do you think it was easier to be scared in the 60s than it is now? I don't know. Like, li living in the 60s was pretty intense and pretty scary, right? Like, living, like, going through... I don't know, it's scary now, too. Yeah, it's pretty scary now, too. Oh, I wasn't even talking politically, politically which, I mean, yeah, that's mm -hmm. ooh, horrifying now. But, uh, I mean, also, you know, then, too. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just meant, like, with, like, less technology and stuff like that. I just feel like... Technology it, makes things less scary. Like in in film? Or oh, you just mean like in day to day life. I, I think maybe in both, mm -hmm. in some ways. Um, yeah, I feel like I could. Yeah, I feel like watching film back in then it could be a lot scarier. Now, like when I was afraid of that bear eating me, I was just looking at my smartphone the whole time. <laughs> when, when you? Yeah, when I got back to my tent and I was like, Oh yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. Looking at but, my, when you, almost get, when you almost got attacked by a bear. Yeah, and even though I was just Googling bear facts, which all of them are scary, it still made it less scary, you know? I just feel like, like the feeling of, like, blanket. connectivity or, like, you could tweet, like, hey, I'm being axe-murdered, you know? And someone like, would, makes yeah. it less scary than if you're just being axe-murdered and you can't let people know. I think that's a problem with, like, found footage films now. Or horror, because a lot of stuff is found footage now, but I guess horror films now in general. It's like, why wouldn't someone just use their phone to call the cops or use their phone? And it's just like really bad contrived writing. Yeah. That you could get away with it in an old movie, you know, there's a killer in the house to cut the phone line. It doesn't mm -hmm. really work like that. Yeah. Killer in the house, they explode an EMP. Oh, yeah, they or something. To pulse out. Yeah, I don't know. It is funny, though, like if it is like a supernatural horror and then like you call the cops on that, I would like to see the cops also show up. Like in whatever movie that is. Are oh, you talking about uh, what we do in the shadows? Have I you seen get that? It. No. They, it's a vampire movie, and the cops come, but one of them like hypnotizes them, so there's like a vampire floating, but they can't see it or they think it's normal. Oh, okay. That's really fun. That's the the um, Fly of the Concords guys did a vampire movie, like a horror comedy. Yeah. It's really cute. It's really funny. That sounds fun. I'd like to watch that. I like it a lot. Um, I'm getting a. I'm getting beeped that uh, we have Devin on the scene in Brazelton, Georgia, as our remote um, correspondent, Devin. Devin? Devin? Oh, hey, hey, Shannon, you just caught me between bites here in the sunshiny capital of, of the town with the most tortilla chips in the world, Brazelton, Georgia. Um, the, a horror, the, my favorite horror movie is a, for, The Forgotten, starring Julianne Moore. It's about the love between a, a mom and a child. And, and how there, there is nothing stronger than the love between a, a mom and a child. Thank you for that, Devin. That was delightful. Um, Clever Monkeys says you need to watch what we do in the shadows. Yeah, I see that. I, I'll watch it, Clever Monkeys, just for you. <laughs> you can. Re we red boxed it. I saw it in the theaters, and I uh, red boxed it too. Oh, and Jack said the killer set up a Faraday cage. That would make a really good horror movie. Yeah, that'd be spooky. Just to know that he could do that. Yeah, that, you, that you're dealing with someone who's capable of that. Yeah, I can't do that. So you could k probably kill me. Yeah. That level of in like intelligence is just like beyond. Yeah. 
It's like you're already dead. Also, I think if I tried to set it, like if they were like, I set up a Faraday cage and they're like, it's pretty easy, you should try it, I'd probably kill myself. Like, <laughs> That's the way that they would kill you. Yeah. They would challenge you and you'd, you'd be like, oh yeah, I can do this. I can hit. They'd get your confidence way up too high. Yeah. And then you would like electrocute yourself and then they'd be like, perfect. But also I wouldn't be able to call anybody. Yeah. While. Oh yeah, while it was happening. So, ooh, that'd be bad. Um, hey, do you have any recommendations for anyone who doesn't like horror and gets incredibly anxious watching anything remotely stressful? Well, my favorite horror movies are extremely stressful. I would say do a goofy horror comedy if you can't do. Yeah, to get in to, to watch a horror film. Yeah, that might be a good starting place. Um, mm -hmm. we, we discussed a little before. We both really like Tucker and Dale versus Yeah, I wanted to talk Evil. about that on the show. Yeah, um, Tucker and Dale versus Evil is like a really fun sort of reversal on tropes about like hillbilly murderers mm -hmm. and stuff. And it's sort of it's a lot of commentary on classism. Yeah, I think it's real and it's really funny and really good natured and it's it's gory but it's not scary. Yeah, it's not scary. It's a little bit gory, but it's never too scary. Like everything that you're set up to like be a scare, like you know, pretty much mm -hmm. reveals itself to be a gag, and that's pretty fun. And also, like, do you feel like if you know the tropes of the genre really well, do you think that makes horror movies maybe less scary? I think well, if you know what's gonna happen. It definitely makes it. Yeah. If, if something's predictable, if it just hits all the typical story beats. But Scream is one of my favorite horror films. Probably one of my favorite films in general. Mm -hmm. If you've seen it. I have not. Scream's great. Um, it does a really good balancing act of being like a really intelligent meta film and also being pretty scary. Oh, Especially that's Especially the cool. first time you see it. It's a slasher. I mean, it's like a... It's sort of because the slasher genre was getting really played out by the mid '90s, and so Scream did a really like post what like super super meta mm -hmm. like someone's like I'll be right back. Oh, that's why you get killed in horror movies. Blah, blah, blah. And the the twist of who the killer is is hysterical, and okay. there's a huge role reversal uh, role reversal in that as well like, yeah. towards the end of it. Without getting into any kind of spoilers, I, I saw the second Scream and I hated it, and I was like I'm not gonna watch any more of these, but um, I like a lot of them. Are you not getting into spoilers for me or the people watching live? Oh, now? for both. Is that okay? I mean, if I don't like, I was going to talk about yeah. Little Evil and just that I hated it. I don't care if I'm spoil a movie. That yeah, you can spoil anything you hate, I think. That's fine. I, I don't care if you spoil anything for me throughout this also. So. Okay, well, don't spoil anything for me. I, okay, I'll I turn like, that to you. Because I'm I, weird. I'm, I'm one of those people who's like, I want to go in not knowing anything. Yeah. Or, or, I mean, like even with Tucker and Dale, I don't like talking specifically about the plot because it's really fun to watch it not knowing. Yeah, that's Especially true. Especially the first like 10, 15 minutes, and then it sort of gets into what the movie is really about. And then later on, there's another like twist. Yeah, it's like three it different. Yeah, itself up. For, yeah. yeah. It's like three, with like these narrative shifts, it's like three different movies. Um, I also like Shaun of the Dead's a really good horror. Shaun of the Dead is scary, but it's also really funny. Um, and really sad in parts, too. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know of like more goofy horror comedies unless you want to go like really really campy and goofy. Uh, so do you feel like the horror movies still scare you pretty well? If like, they're do good. You feel, if they're good? Okay. Um, the Witch scared me. Oh man, you know what? The Witch is, uh, yeah, that's definitely my favorite. The shot, w movie. without g getting into it, the shot with the crow or whatever. Yeah. I actually watched that on a, uh, someone on a forum I posted at was streaming it similar to this. So I'm looking at it on a tiny screen and that scene, we were all in the chat just screaming, like, ah, ah, everyone was freaking out. Yeah, that's, man, yeah, that scene is so amazing and so well acted. Mm -hmm. um, I, You know, most horror movies don't really scare me that much, but The Witch scared me. Oh, um, freaked me out. Yeah, and I think it's like, that one does such a good job where, like, all the supernatural stuff is, like, you know, all the normal stuff is as scary as the supernatural stuff. Just, like, imagining, the like, dad? living yeah. in that, like, family out in that settlement. Especially like, as a woman in yeah. that time period. Like, it does such a good job of just setting up things where, like, even if just none of the supernatural stuff in that movie was there or, like, it was revealed, you know, at the end to be like, oh, you know, not saying it is or isn't, but, like, it was mm -hmm. revealed to be like, oh, they're just, like, afraid of their own shadows. Well, the, it's still, still scary that they're that afraid of their own shadows. And, like, yeah, that movie's great. I like that one a lot. I like, recent horror has been great. I liked, oh, what is it called? Oh, what's the horror? Can't, it, it Comes at Night, I think is what it was called. I liked You're Next, The Witch, mm -hmm. Green Room, if you want to count it. More of a thriller. Green Room's really good. Yeah. Um, I don't know, just like a lot of really good um, atmospheric, serious horror, and social commentary horror. I'm really, really mm -hmm. happy that Get Out did as well as it did in the box office. Yeah, see, I really like Get Out a lot, but also wasn't like super afraid of it at any point, you know. No, I, I did like the. Good. I think it was real, sort of iconic. Now the guy running, 
in the yard. That oh, was that's true. That was a, a cool bit. scene. Yeah, that was a little yeah. bit scary. Yeah. And you felt really, really bad for most of the characters. And people are talking about Black Phillip in the chat. Oh, man. Black Phillip was the best. Yeah, he's so cool. What's that like to live deliciously? Or what are talking about lines from weird animals in horror movies. Mm -hmm. We got the Chaos Reigns Fox. And we got Black Phillip. Um, Do you... Is this... No, oh, that'd be too much of a spoiler. For such a good movie, I don't want to spoil it. You want to keep it... Yeah. And I think, too, yeah, and I think... And Peep's talking about um, spectatorship with Get Out. I think it's a different movie if you're a black person versus... That's although true. you can understand the yeah. perspective. It's a really different... Or, like, deep, like, fears from... Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. And uh, Under the Skin, I would say it's more of a sci-fi movie. Um, but I liked it. I've heard of Train to Busan. I was on a... Um, zombie movie panel at con carolinas and bill who talked about eyes without a face was talking about that movie it's like a i think it's korean it's a um zombie movie set on a train that's supposed to be mm -hmm. really intense and like sad and like emotionally engaging and gripping it sounds really cool that does sound really cool i've never heard of that until now but i heard of it on that panel i'd like to check that out i would Is, like to see that do you think there's anything that you can just be put in a movie that's going to scare you like regardless like, is there any just, like, one, like, you know, like, vampires or, like, demons or, like, you know, like, just any one, like, monster like type? Like, trope archetype. or... Yeah, trope or... Yeah, tropes are also great. Or just, like, type of monster that's, like, always scary to you. I don't get freaked out by monsters. I will say, um, have you seen Oculus? No. Oculus is this movie. It's, like, these... Without getting into the whole, it's pretty convoluted, the plot. There's a haunted mirror. Mm -hmm. And when people are around it sometimes, what they're seeing and what per they're perceiving isn't real, but what their actions are real. Mm -hmm. So there's a scene where someone, it's like a flashback, but someone has like a Band-Aid on their finger. And they take a staple remover, mm -hmm. and because they can't get the Band-Aid off and they're frustrated. So they're like pulling it off, and you cut, and they're actually pulling their fingernail off. It's like what you're perceiving isn't what's really happening. And mm -hmm. to me, that gets into sort of like mental illness and like dementia and stuff and being disconnected from reality and disconnected from your family yeah. and, and your actions having con that freaks me out really bad okay. i think even if oculus is pretty good that one i watched it with my cousin and it freaked us out really really bad i think more than monsters it's sort of the idea of losing control of myself like of my mental faculty or just being disconnected from what's really going on that, that scares me a lot but I am always like slightly like in the Phil K. Dick sense, like very just like, well, what if I'm doing like, what if I'm actually just running someone over my car right now? Oh yeah, like, like, like my desk or like, you know, I am always afraid that like I am just like crazy and that like all the mundane <laughs> things. Oh, yeah, I do, that's like an actual like, fear. Like I a, think so. Yeah, I think that's like an ad, like a day to day fear of just like, what if I'm like always or just like, what if the way I perceive reality is very different from? It's like you're in the Matrix, is. but it's you're just running over pedestrians in your car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hashtag the Matrix. But um, yeah. Actually, before we catch up on the chat, I want to um, cut to my friend Ethan, who's dead now who's going to give us some uh, horror recommendations. Hi Shannon, got some bad news. Uh, I am actually dead now. Um, I am a ghost. and uh, But this does make me an authority on horror movies, so I'm gonna give you guys some more deep dive recommendations. Uh, you know, everybody's always asking me, yeah, you've seen The Thing, I've seen The Shining, I've seen Alien, so let's do some deep dive recommendations. First up is by Peter Jackson, the one and only, yeah, the guy who'd made Lord of the Rings, yep. He made this crazy zombie movie in the 80s. It's gory as hell. It's really funny. Got a lot of slapstick humor, um, a lot of great practical effects. Um, this is movie is hard to find in print, but see if you can check it out online. Amazing. See if you can rent it from a local video store. Anyway, another one is uh, Halloween 3. Not directed by Carpenter, but produced by him. Um, nothing to do with Michael Myers. Um, it's actually about this uh, creepy uh, Halloween masks that are being produced by the Shady Company, and it started, you know, gonna take over the town, gonna destroy the population of Earth or their kids or something. Really creepy, but and kind of cheesy, but again, really fun time to watch on Halloween or around this time of year. Anyway. Um, I know you think ghosts should look like they should have the thing over their heads, but actually that's only Casey Affleck's ghost. We like to have this so you can um, better see our expressions, our range of emotions as ghosts since we have those. But anyway, that's um, that's my recommendation, Shannon, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I'm dead. Sorry. Hey. So, Horse Hockey asks, what are our favorite horror subgenres? Do you have a like a favorite... 
I don't think so. Do you? I like. I do like meta horror a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's this movie called that's I guess fairly obscure called Re Resolution. Mm -hmm. I forget the name of the two directors. They also are the two guys who worked on it. They also did a movie called Spring that I liked a lot. And Resolution is sort of similar to Cabin in the Woods. It's like this dude. Um, his friend is a meth addict, so he chains him. He like handcuffs him in this abandoned house. He's like, you gotta get clean. Mm -hmm. But then everything going on around them. There's like a Native American burial ground, and this it's like weird horror cliches. There's a cult. But it's really intelligently done and just like strange. I, I, I like stuff like that a whole lot, like yeah. horror and horror comedy and just straight up like we were talking about The Witch, like just atmospheric. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I like zombie movies and stuff, but I want there to be something else apart from, and I like gory movies and over the top camp stuff, but I like there to be something else to hold on to. Yeah, and a zombie movie to make it interesting. and Yeah, to yeah. actually care about. What a weird jaded world we live in where it's just like I need something else with zombies in order to yeah, well there's zombies got to be such a I, I mean, everyone, boy, zombie fatigue really, yeah I'm so sick of them that. I like I did like the the Walking Dead video game mm -hmm. it's really good yeah my it's brothers so recommended that to it me. like made me cry at the end of the first season and I don't cry mm -hmm. watching stuff I'm not you know but, but I watched a, a few episodes of the show and I'm like I don't like this I don't care about this and I think that's the thing with Walking Dead always, though, is like what it does to make it interesting is like you care for the characters and like yeah. you care for the survival drama, but like the zombies are always just kind of like a background thing. Mm -hmm. Like even when they're like trying really hard to make the zombies cool, like that only lasts for a second, and then like people stick around either reading the comics or watching the show or playing the games because they're the like yeah. yeah, the characters are like the scenarios and stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas something like The Witch. It's so, the horror is so integrated into the scene and the mm -hmm. time and the characters and the overbearing father and all that and the weird psychosexual tension that's going on the whole time. Mm -hmm. And you saw It, right? Yes, I did yeah. see It. I, I really liked It a lot. It was um, fun! It was fun, yeah. This, see, with It, like, again, it was just, like, not scary to me, though, but I was just like, they did a great job of making this movie. No, it wasn't scary at all. And, like, for, like, a popcorn movie, you know, mm -hmm. like, I cared about the characters, like, the whole time and, like, I was very, like... I thought it was very funny, and um, when he said he was gonna have to fucking kill that clown, I felt that like I was like, <laughs> That's yeah, like, yeah, you will. Oh man, I thought you, you were kids, say you some, got it. I thought you were gonna say something different, but you didn't. <laughs> um, I like I related to the little neurotic kid who's got like Munchausen's by proxy. Yeah, I liked him a lot because I'm, I'm like weird about germs and whatever. That yeah. was me as a kid. Like I don't want to. Yeah, I think he. It's weird that that is like also like the character arc that I think like that he gets over. Honestly, his has the biggest like <laughs> transformation and like yeah, and the whole movie is that kid. It's it's weird how that movie handles abuse. That's I guess the only thing I really didn't like about it was like there's such there are serious serious themes of like uh, childhood sexual abuse mm -hmm. and other forms of abuse and neglectful parents and like, but then parts of it are so goofy. It's yeah. so over the top and so childish. It's to me, it tonally kind of went. On. I, I enjoyed it. I liked it, especially for a pop, big popcorn movie. They really mm -hmm. put a lot of work in and care. They wasn't just like a cash in remake. No. Whatever. Um, no, they definitely yeah put a lot of effort into making a good film, and I'm excited to see if they. Well, that's a spoiler, but. Oh, uh, well, there's gonna be another one. Yeah, I'm excited to see the next one and what they do with it. Me too. And it, the, just the opening, I had never seen. I had never read the book or. Um, seen the uh, full like TV special or whatever, mm -hmm. the first movie. So that whole opening sequence with the little brother, I was just like, oh my gosh, that was really dark. That was really heavy. I didn't, you know, yeah. this is not, and it's like the darkest part of the movie, I think. It is the darkest part of the movie. It's like the first 10 minutes. Yeah. It, it's interesting to me. It also like definitely reveals it being a different it than like the one from, than the Tim Curry one. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a lot, he's a lot more like animalistic and kind of like, he just kind of like he forgets he just doesn't have things to say at times and he's just kind of like yeah come on come on and he just like has a like set amount of things and he runs out but um instead of like the tim curry which seems like a lot more like sociopathic and like mm -hmm. more sort of personality to it rather than it being a creature or yeah. whatever or like it's, it's he, more tim curry it's more tim curry just being like it's fun to mess with these people and scare them and mm -hmm. like this is just what i do for kicks but um so I guess it was set in 1988, right? Yeah, the new one is set in the, yeah in the 80s. And then it comes back every 27 years. So, so it's going to be set. Spoilers. 2015. <laughs> it's going to be set in close to now times. Yeah. Which well, is I, interesting that they because in the in the Tim Curry one the flashbacks or, or the early ones are set in the 50s, right? Yeah, they're set in the, the 50s 80s. and it's the 80s, like when that movie was made. 
and then this one, but it's interesting that you're like, oh, it's definitely going to be 2015, and like, what specifically, what about that year, do you think? Is going to be uh, playing in Was it Pogs? What was it? <laughs> what was going on in 2015 that was so scary? I feel like everything started, our whole cultural landscape got started getting weird in 2016. Yeah, that's I feel like 2015 was the last. Like, yeah, that they could do not, it and have it be apolitical without yeah, it Yeah, apolitical. Yeah. And not, yeah, it's not even just uh, politics. It's just everything has just got, to me, so, so much strain with the political shift. Mm -hmm. The whole cultural landscape, it just gets weirder and weirder. And right in 2016. In 2016, yeah. and it just keeps um, going on off. So what about parts of movies that aren't horror, but have great horror scenes slash moments? My pick for that is Mulholland Drive. I was going to say that too. Oh my God. Oh man. That is the yeah. scariest scene out of any, that has scared me more that, than anything else. Yeah, that and it's so boy. Like it's set up just so well. Just thinking about it makes, it freaks me out. The concept of the scene where it's like, hey, this happened in a dream. I have to prove to myself that it's not that. And then mm -hmm. it starts mm -hmm. falling into like whatever. And then what actually is scary could just be an actual thing and not like part of the dream. Oh boy. It was, What's oh, Billy? <laughs> oh man, my friend Matt made it. Hey Matt, Matt's been trying to watch these every oh, single cool. time. Oh cool, hey Matt. Um, back at it again at Krispy Kreme. They're talking about vines. No. Oh yeah, the creepy clowns in the forest were 2016, I think. Um, that might have been 2015. That's a good oh, point. It? Yeah, I think so. I think that was because the harbingers that, of of death, the creepy clowns in the woods. Yeah, or like walking around town and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I think that was 2015. That's interesting that it's set up for that. Have you watched any of the like short horror films that are on YouTube over the years? Um, the only ones I've watched are like ones that like bill themselves as like a real occurrence on uh, YouTube. Like, like which ones? Uh, the like that like Costa Rican like uh, fallen angel demon thing. You know what I'm talking uh, about? What is it? What is that? I think it's called like fallen angel, and it's like it's a bunch of dudes walking through the woods in the middle of the night with like flashlights, and like they were out to like. Oh, we heard a noise in the middle of the night, so we're going to go out there with flashlights and also film it because... You, That's what you do. It's going to be interesting. And then oh, there's yeah, like... Hornets. This like... Oh, yeah, Marble Hornets, too. Um, I was obsessed with that like seven years ago. I was... I, I watched it for the first time like two years ago. And well, I was like that, as they came out. I can't imagine it was like watching it as they came out because it gets really repetitive, you know? It's, it's goofy. It is really goofy, and then them but like then fighting is really funny, too. The one where he's like in the car... And then he leans back and you see that Slenderman's been there the whole time. Oh, that I don't think I've seen that out. one. Yeah. There's one, and then there's one where it's in a house. Alex. Um, we've got, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting one more, I'm getting a message that De Devin is trying to reach us from a, a birthday party. I think Devin, we're getting, and he's going to talk about his, some of his favorite horror movies um, from a birthday party. Hey, Shannon. Um... Today I'm, I'm reporting from my uh, my dead little brother's uh, Isaac, my dead little brother Isaac's uh, eighth birthday party. Um, I really uh, a horror movie is um, the Saul movie. There's a new one coming out um, called. Uh, um, the Saul Master, and it's about where um, the Saul Master came from. I also like um, the um, the one about the one with the ghosts, Ghost Dimension. Um, what's it, what's it called? The Ghost Dimension. Emma, what's the Ghost Dimension ones? Oh, Paranormal Activity. I told you I don't like this bit. There's like an alcoholic on a bench. Okay. Well, um, that was a really sad birthday party. That was. I... What Devin was at. I hope the kid got what he deserved. <laughs> Did you ever read or get into creepypasta? Um, you know, I just, like Slender Man, like all the popular. Like the big one? Yeah. Did you read The Rake? No. Or, uh, Candle Cove. Was What's really... What happens in Candle Cove? Candle Cove, it's uh, like a, for well, I'm going to spoil Candle Cove, which has been around for like 
10 years yeah. or whatever. It's like it's like people on a forum or a message board or whatever, they're like talking about, I remember mm -hmm. this TV show when I was a kid. Yeah, it was called Candle Cook. Yeah, it was kind of weird. And it's really written really well as in, it's actually, you know, people had different typing styles and different usernames and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, you had this weird skeleton, but it was weird when you started doing this and it gets like creepier and creepier. Oh, there's our ghost friends back. And it's sort of like more unnerving, strange things happening in it. And then the end of it, someone's like, my mom came into the room when I was watching it, and it was just me staring at static on the screen. Mm -hmm. So it was all this weird, like, psychic thing. That was, it's really well written. I don't yeah. know if that sounds that scary. Um, but that was always one of my favorites. And the rake is just this creature. Like, that's another one that was just, like, written really well. And there are a couple others that I just, like, I got really, really into it mm -hmm. around 2010 and read all the big ones, and they sort of had an impact on my horror writing. And yeah. It's a really cool, more modern way. And, and I really, something I like about it too is that it's not very like, you don't write it for money or for ego or whatever. Yeah, you're just you're yeah. writing to scare people. Um, someone asked, is How to Cure Curses a real video? Do you remember that from Mana Curse? It yeah. Is, it is not a real video I made just as much as you see in it pretty much is what, I was really sick with mono, that's when I was dying. It would be a cool video to make into a full length How to Cure, I'll do it better than I did on the How to Cure Curses. Hi, this is episode. 47 of How to Cure Curses. I don't think ghosts are that scary. No, you know, the way we think about ghosts is like, they're kind of like, they can only interact with our world a little bit and they seem kind of feeble. Um, yeah. I think it'd be scary to make a movie where you're trapped as a ghost, but like, that's also such a like, it was me the whole yeah, oh, There's a, a certain big M. Night Shyamalan movie. Oh, is there? There is, a, well, uh, there's a big, uh, I am alive. What, what's I, am, it I am Night Shyamalan's. Uh, oh, I was a ghost the whole time. Oh, that's right. His the one that we know him for. That's <laughs> right. I had that spoiled, and I got so angry when Elevator. I was like ten years old. Yeah, yeah, I don't no. care if we spoil the village. It's not a good movie. Yeah, it's I not a good movie. They're uh, in the modern world, but they're raised to believe that they're in the ancient times, and that and there's that's some the weird twist. color scheme things going on there. Um, and that's the twist. Uh, but that is that is kind of bad twist. In the, like that twist made me more excited about the movie. That mm -hmm. like when you watch it, you're like, oh yeah, this. That's just kind of an arbitrary ending. <laughs> like it's, it's just, just sort of it just stuff just happens. Yeah. Um, it's not even called the happening. The I've seen the only scene I've seen from the happening. It's something like the wind or the trees are evil or something. And there's a guy just sort of standing and lions eat his arms off, and he just sort of lets him, and it's really funny. That's pretty and really fun. weird. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not gonna watch any more of this. I don't know. Oh, we got the um, ecto cooler. Yeah, Glimer or whatever. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I have. I'm interested in dating. If ever anyone in Atlanta or long distance. Yeah, sure. Why not? I Anyone from uh, anywhere? Anywhere. You know what? If you pay to come see me. If you fly to oh. Atlanta, guaranteed date. Guaranteed. Anyway, sorry. To the curious We got cat someone, you got um, so a 19 year old from the UK. Oh, he's a big boy though. Do you like, do you like, you don't? I, yeah, I'm interested in women, but if he's like real, if he's, you know, if he's building sized. <laughs> a giant, you want a giant man. Either yeah. like a what, like a, Either a, woman a human or a, woman or a, or a giant, giant man. man. Yeah. Um, Matt says his heart belongs to the sea. Mm. Well, I think they're um, talking about like a horror comedy or like a sci-fi horror. Okay, or like, say, why, like, did, Alien, why do they want it to not be a Or Tucker and Dale or like Alien yeah. sci-fi. It's not a horror movie. Like why are people so rigid in those boundaries? I think, like I said, I think certain people are so pedantic and they're sort of like, well, I know all about this and this is my thing. And no, mm -hmm. if it's not serious, then it can't. And I think it's, so I have a, like a little list on my letterbox to my favorite horror movies and I put my whole and drive on there and some yeah. others. Are, and then some people have been like, well, that's not, I'm like, it's scary. So, Let me have it. But Mulholland Drive would be like noir then, right? If it's I guess it's like neo-noir, just David yeah. Lynch, whatever he's doing. Yeah, just a bunch of weird but scenes. But it's scary and I think it, it's scarier than pretty much anything else on the list. There's some other films that are really scary. Yeah, you know, that is the last movie I can think of that I would like, even more so than The Witch maybe that I was like really afraid of. Mm -hmm. I watched that in high school at like a friend in my neighborhood's house and after the movie, it was like t midnight in like a suburban neighborhood. It was safe, but I had to like run home. Cause like, you were I ran like, all, and I was very that guy behind the diner is gonna like kill you. Yeah, I guess so. I don't even like the whole feeling of the like world felt very scary after that movie. But like watching it now, like I don't feel that way as much. Mm -hmm. Like from like that one scene's great and super scary, but like the rest of it's just kind of like a lot of weird scenes and like mm -hmm. kind of noir. Like yeah, neo noir. Dream. Yeah, dream, dream like dream sequences, logic. but. Yeah, why do people get upset when like horror touches another genre? It's because I think they want it to be like 
Do you think it's like also maybe a pure? Well, like a purity thing. People yeah, are. but like it's like maybe one of the least pure genres like and, and, in some ways. Like if you're to be like, oh, it has to be like a pure thing that like it can scare me without being like sci-fi or like being whatever. Like like most horror movie monsters are like pretty unrealistic and like mm -hmm. if anything you might say they're in the realm of fantasy if they get supernatural you know at all yeah. um, um also horse hockey was calling you big boy oh he's calling me they're big not boy. a big boy so they're not a big boy oh, okay it's a dude but he's not giant so oh. not on well, the table. i'm sorry um but if you ever get blown up or if, if I get honey shrunk, the kids. Did. Oh, if you if you're like this big, then every man. Yeah, then every man is attractive. It's perfect for yeah, big. Then I'm just, also, if it's a huge woman, I'm not attracted to her. So if they shrink so, me, uh, I'm full on. Your sexuality homosexual. is just like. Yeah. There you go. Um, Evil Dead Two is maybe the best horror movie ever. Oh, what, what do you think? You, what do you think that answer to that question is for you, though? Like for why people get obsessed with genre purity. Uh, well, it's any kind of thing, like comics or video games or other stuff people a lot of the times people who are kind of especially alienated in real life mm -hmm. like nerdy people just being blunt about it like nerdy people who might be a little bit socially awkward or whatever they have something that they finally find and they like it a lot and they're like this is mine mm -hmm. and no one else can have it and it has to be serious and it has to be this way and this is how i like it yeah and um i think anything that doesn't fit their really rigid definitions or if there's anything they see as threatening to that they get really upset mm -hmm. like this can't be you know Whereas I'm like, if you like study horror, if you study genres in general, there's no, it's really hard to find a clear cut definition and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Who cares if it's a good movie and yeah. it has these elements, if it's fun, if it, it brings something new. It's like, why do you care? Mm -hmm. Why are people, people get so wrapped up and so pedantic and just like angry. I love that we have all these dancing skeletons. I'm not really looking at the chat that much and I look no, over. No, I keep getting distracted <laughs> by the skeletons. Yeah, some, yeah, Peeb said genre purity is dumb because it's just people who want their thing not touched by other people. Yeah, I guess the only reason I would think, uh, the dumb reason I was thinking is like maybe because it's like a gimmicky thing to be like, not, it's not just horror, it's also sci-fi, but I don't think mm -hmm. any, I don't think any movie's ever built itself that way. So it's got so this, not, it's got Alien in it. It's got them both. It's well, like, it's Event Horizon. It's got, you know, you, I, you know, I'd really like to enjoy Alien but it's got aliens in it, so it's not scary anymore. Yeah. Um, we've got so many fancy skeletons. Would you want Alien to not be scary? <laughs> like, what would the movie even be then? Just like... It would be Aliens. Yes, yeah, Alien. Oh. oh, yeah. Ooh. I like Aliens, though. Yeah. Some people don't like it. I haven't seen any of the other, the other ones. Uh, well, we're, I think we're about to wrap it up. Can we get a giant skeleton? Travis? Cue up the giant skeleton. We need a giant skeleton. Are we getting a, we getting a, yeah! So you're oh, going to be attracted to the skeleton. Yeah, because he's going to get big. He's going to get big. We're going to have a big guy, a big fancy skeleton. Yes! Yes! We're on a delay. I'm just, how are you feeling about the skeleton? Oh, it's a, uh, ooh. <laughs> we got it. It's not that big. I want it to like, I want to be dwarfed. By the the, gig the horribly threat, it's gonna crush us underneath its bones. Oh yes, we have it. I am Eclipse. I didn't want to be in the crotch of the alien. And the alien, the skeleton. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my god. We need a fancy alien on the screen. That is loot. I didn't ask for this. I'm get I'm getting. Uh, it's like it's giving birth to me sideways. That's why its legs were moving. There we go. Because, like, death is scary, but everybody's going to die. Like, monsters are scary, but mm -hmm. not... I just, like, I see a picture of, like, a wolf man. I'm not like, oh. Yeah. But I think that's part of what's so scary about the Mulholland Drive scene, too. It's sort of, like, consciousness and dreams. Like, what is real? What am I perceiving? Mm -hmm. That's really... That's some. That's the scariest thing. Um, they make that... They make that scary thing at the end of that look really scary, too. But then every time you rewatch it, it's, like, it's... Like, you know, I the other day went back and just rewatched that scene a couple times uh, mm -hmm. when I was watching it. And it, like, it seems less scary when you know it's going to pop out. But and it's just um, sort of like a strange homeless man. Yeah, it's just a strange homeless but man. He looks burnt. Like, he <laughs> looks like, <laughs> looks like it doesn't look like whatever, like, whatever happened to him, you'd have no idea. But it was bad. Um, yeah, it was really bad. I, death scares me. Really death bad. scares you? Yeah, death the scares death. me. Yeah, I'm very afraid of death. I think I've made and, peace with it. I mean, I know More every human that's lived has gone through it. 
but uh, or will eventually. Yeah, it's an inevitability unless you want to get do cryonics and put your head in a jar and see if you can see the future in a thousand I, years. I do want to do that. Though. You can do you can do, get a life insurance policy, and that pays for it when you die to put your head to mm -hmm. like put you in liquid nitrogen. I came from like a pretty religious household and I was also like very neurotic as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, well, there's no way I can be good enough to get to heaven. Like, oh. it sounds like nobody can. So like, I have this like instinctual feeling that like, no matter what, when we die, we just go to hell. And that's like, a I lot scarier think, than, yeah. Like I know like rationally, like, no, that can't happen. There's probably no afterlife. But I really like in my bones feel that like, everyone who dies just goes to hell and like, I just feel like you die, and then it's just the worst pain ever for. Uh, <laughs> um, that was when I, when I. So was, I think that's part of the reason why I'm so afraid of death. Is that what comes after? Yeah. The, is it the unknown aspect of it, and or yeah. it's just your assumption that it's going to be worse than what's going on right now? I mean, like rationally, I think it's like you know the idea that like, you know, we're cameras, and like once a camera like is destroyed and you can't perceive anything anymore, mm -hmm. like what is that experience like? There's nothing that you compare that experience to, and it just stops. You know, like rationally, mm -hmm. that's what. I think death is, is just an ending of perceiving things and we have no idea what it's like not to perceive things so we can't rationally think of it. Conceptualize it. But, like, the way I feel is it's just, it's gonna be, it's just gonna be awful, and yeah. That was, when, when I was reading, I read this whole huge article about cryonics, I thought it was really interesting. It's like, the mm -hmm. arguments against it, one of them was like, well, what if you're just a brain in a jar and they torture you forever? Like, yeah. That could happen. You don't, you're not in control anymore mm -hmm. if you're put under and then like, you don't know what the future will be like. You might not understand the future. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really interesting and scary. And uh, they're talking about body horror. You see, you like some Cronenberg? Some oh, Cronenberg movies? Um, <laughs> have we talked about this before? I don't think so. I watched uh, Scanners last week. Oh, we talked about it a little a... bit. I haven't seen Scanners, but I've seen oh, some of it. Hey, it really is just like, it's crazy that's in the Criterion Collection and like maybe it's... N Maybe I'm not giving it enough credit, but it really feels like they just came up with the gimmick of just like people can just act like, <laughs> and like it can be convincing, and like they're like let's just make a whole movie out of that. We'll and just put do that. A plot together to it, and like it really felt like it was Cronenberg. In some ways, like it kind of is like it maybe is like a world that he thinks is really interesting. This world of scanners, or that like homeless people like feel like they could like control minds, or like are driven crazy by it, but like. Mm -hmm. Very surface level, it's just a lot of people just doing like <laughs> Just like on an aesthetic like, level. Yeah. Which, maybe I should, I don't know why I don't like that as a movie. When I say it out loud, it sounds great. Do you know his, do you know his film Shivers? Like one of his first films? No. It's like these people stuck, it's like an island resort, and there are these little bug monsters that turn them into like sex zombies, like sex crazed. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you think it's an allegory for AIDS, but I think it was like a pre-AIDS. Or like, it's just like more worry about STDs. It's just like people, these little disgusting looking creatures. And that's like the whole yeah. movie. And it looks really corny. And it's not really scary, but you can kind of see the weird side. Like I've seen that, like Dead Ringers is really, mm -hmm. really good. Where um, I think Jeremy Irons plays like twin gynecologists. Mm -hmm. It's like really weird and messed up. Um, yeah. It's a much more serious movie, I think, than Scanners or Shivers. I think body horror does get to me in some ways because like, um, I used to have like a big fear of fish when I was a kid. Why um, fish? Oh, just like going swimming in the ocean and oh, having and then like, like touch fish eating your you. feet. Yeah, and just stuff? Little, there's something about like it's a different intelligence. Like it doesn't. We didn't have no common like thinking mm -hmm. and. But like, what if it swims up my swim trunks and then the netting and like men's swimsuits and then it gets like just stuck right next mm -hmm. to, and then it's just it stuck like bites there. You or it bites me or it's just like it doesn't, I don't know, it's just something about it being like a different thing. Like that scared me a lot as a, so I guess to some extent maybe body horror. Do you know about the Kandiru fish and like the Amazon? Oh, the like one that, that goes that in your urethra, up. yeah. Yeah, that's crazy that can swim up a piece. <laughs> And then, what? like, get stuck, yeah. <laughs> That's the silliest thing to imagine. It, no, it's the most horrific thing. Yeah, but I guess it may be because it's warm it wants to, but it's like, it's warm, it's kind of, it's fast enough to swim up it. Yeah. That's so crazy. Without someone, like, yeah. noticing and stopping it. That's awful. Like, you think that would be your, like, number one. But I don't mind it, like, as an adult, when I'm at the beach, and they, like, mm -hmm. pull fish on your, it, it freaked me out as a kid. Yeah, it doesn't And big fish are, like, I don't necessarily want to be. Yeah. And sharks freak me out. I like thinking that Cronenberg did think that, um, that I was movie. thinking about the Kandiru fish first. No, uh, well, I, 
I like the idea that in that in Shivers that like he does think it's a great metaphor for AIDS, but it's just like, and it makes them, it makes them really horny, and they want to. Like, yeah. They just grab each Once other. They get, and he sex just zombies. like misses that, and he's just like, yeah, they're just all about that. Then that's what AIDS is. Um, yeah, that's what it is. It just makes you want to pass it on to other people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know what what since it was pre AIDS, I don't I don't know what Shivers is quote unquote about, but it's. Fun. Yeah, it's just it's a weird. Fun. It's so it's a campy. Uh, I haven't seen Teeth. I had the opportunity to see. Do you know what Teeth is? I've about? seen Teeth. Yeah, like Teeth it. is great. Um, it's so good. It's uh, I think it's another one of those things where it's um, mixing genres, but it does it kind of subtly. Mm -hmm. To me, like watching it, I it feels like a superhero origin story in a nice. lot of ways. I would like love it's one of those that. things I know where the like of it. I would like. Yeah, it. That's a pretty fun movie. Um, <laughs> We got a little dancing guy. Um, it took me a minute to notice it, that we have a hopping skeleton. Yeah, me too. Do you have a favorite horror movie, like one, uh, more than anyone else that you can rewatch, or just like, not that you think is objectively the best, but a personal favorite? The Witch, um, maybe. I, I don't see great... many movies and then immediately want to watch them again, but like I went to go see The Witch again like the next day after I saw it in theaters. It's pretty good. Mahola Drive is really great. Um, mm -hmm. It's, you know, I like, I like any movies where like they try to just make every scene be really entertaining, and I think that David Lynch did that. Like mm -hmm. more than anything, it just kind of feels like a collection of weird scenes, but like each one of them is like pretty different than the others in a lot of ways and very like entertaining in its own. What about you? Do you have any just oh Suspiria? I was about to say we need oh man, you know Suspiria. Like watching that the other weekend, like because it was we the first I went time. to the, we went to the 4K screening with a bunch of yeah. friends. Yeah. We, we had like a whole row in the theater. It was just people that I knew. I like how dumb the plot is. I like how beautiful it is the whole that way That little through. kid? Yeah, that little kid. People I love him. We were comparing him. him to Baron Trump on Twitter, and it was really funny. I love that. I think that. my friend Ethan did. Ethan the Ghost tweeted that. Just like that dead-eyed small child. I was just really amped up after that scene. I was like, that was really with good. The, the Romanian one? Was she yeah, with her. With yeah. Scary knife? I like her and his relationship, but it never comes up again. Like, that's never that explained. That movie doesn't make any sense No, at all. It, it doesn't. I, you know, and also, like, things about horror just as a genre, it's never scary to me once you know what, it, you know, like, once you learn what the monster's, like, MO is or whatever, yeah. like, whatever messed up thing happened to it in his childhood to make it be spooky. It's never scary to me once they explain, but like, it. Suspiria is like kind of illogical in its Well, own you do way. have the, the five minute exposition scene. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go back to... But the five minute so exposition weird. scene like, does the opposite, like it, it's two people who disagree with each other who's <laughs> like, this guy, he knows everything, and he's going to get you straightened out, and then that guy immediately... He's like, witches aren't real, the guy sits down, so they're totally witches. They're totally real. Uh, this is the witch, uh, this is what you got to do. Um, but yeah, if, that, we can, if we can wrap... Do you think that's it for you, Suspiria, the one that uh, you could... I, I like Deep Red more than Suspiria. Okay, I haven't watched the right Deep Red. Deep Red uh, you though. watched the wrong version, or yeah. a different version. You probably got the f general feel of it, I don't know. I like. Um, I don't think so. I think there's something that's testing, really missing testing. with the version I watch. You gotta watch the all. If you ever get a Blu-ray player, I can lend you the Blu-ray. Yeah. That's really good. I like uh, Scream a lot. There's a movie called Peeping Tom. It's really good. Okay. I like the 42 Cat People. 1942. It had like the first jump scare. It's oh wow. It's a really good movie. Um, I like Scream a lot. Evil Dead movies, especially Evil Dead 2. Uh, I just like a lot of. Resolution is really up there. I like a lot of different horror movies a whole lot. I know you do, yeah. And then we got John Wick closing it out. Glad he's back. Uh, he makes me feel more sick. Can I rant? Can I rant real quick, guys? Yeah, yeah. please do. Come in here, Travis. And here rant. comes Travis. Uh, you want to get on my mic? Get get on both my mic and your mic. Okay, perfect. Because <laughs> I'd like to talk about something very near and dear dear to my heart the, here for today. For the last few minutes of the horror. For the last few <laughs> minutes of the horror segment. And I brought my good friends the skeletons back, and thank you for tuning in here today. Um, here's a book called Out of Time. Uh, that is the exact same plot as The Village without uh, <laughs> fucking monster outfits. And it came out like so long before that goddamn movie. 
I was so upset when I saw the village. Because was, not because the village sucks, because it specifically ripped off a book that you liked. Exactly, and the. Have book, you just been holding this in the entire time? As soon as you mentioned the village, I said, <laughs> "It's my perfect platform to finally take him Night Shyamalan's to task for stealing out of time my favorite book as a The Sixth Sense was stolen from an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. Or something like that. One of his movies was ripped off. If you go on IMDb, it's one of the trivia things. I feel like that's very close. It's going to be very It's going to be a little blown out, definitely. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, he ripped off Are You Afraid of the Dark, the children's horror show from the 90s. That's probably the most effective horror thing I've ever seen. That freaked me out. I remember I was six years old, and it was like Y7. I was like, ooh. When that's the a episode with the Nickelodeon magazine 3D glasses, where when you put them on, you see the lady just standing in doorways. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. I had the magazine. I had the like magazine. ladies just standing I, around. I didn't get that. Anyway, y'all end whenever you want to. Oh. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, your, um, it's your studio now. Well, we can uh, we can wrap. Wrap it up. Travis is laying on the ground. Kristen. All right. Oh, He's got a mic. Kristen, hit stop stream. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you, everyone, America. for coming. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you Fucking for everyone. Fucking nice. Yes, on. Out of time, great book. Thank you, everyone, who's sending questions in chat. Kristen, did we hit stop stream?